fired up all around Husky Stadium last weekend during Northern Illinois' 97th homecoming celebration. Inside the stadium, the undefeated Huskies were equally as stoked. Head coach Joe Novak would challenge his team to step up its intensity, and Northern would respond to the charge on both sides of the football. Michael DeBerner Turner would scorch the Western Michigan defense on the Huskies' second play from scrimmage, giving Northern an early lead for the first time this season. It would be a lead they would not relinquish as the Husky D corralled the Broncos' potent passing attack on its way to an easier than expected 37-10 victory. The highlights from this game and much more are straight ahead on this edition of Inside Husky Sports. Everybody, I'm Brad Hoy and welcome to another edition of Inside Husky Sports here on Fox Sports Net. Well, NIU's Husky Stadium is a popular place these days. It's the home of the 12th ranked Northern Illinois University Husky football team. And in today's program, we'll bring you highlights of the latest Northern victory. It came over Western Michigan University this past weekend on homecoming here on the NIU campus. As usual, we'll have our weekly conversation with head Husky football coach Joe Novak and have some conversations with some of the victorious Husky football players following that game. Later in the show, our Inside Husky Sports correspondent, Christy Wooden, will give us a peek at NIU women's golf. All this and more coming up on this edition of Inside Husky Sports, so don't go away. Inside Husky Sports on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Culver's Frozen Custard and Butterburgers, America's favorites made fresh. The Village Commons Bookstore. For all your Husky clothing and souvenirs, visit us at pcbs.com. U.S. Cellular. We connect with you. And Applebee's. Eating good in the neighborhood. All right. Yeah. Hey, call me on Ed's phone. Is your phone broken, Joe? No, my wireless company doesn't give me enough anytime minutes. Hey. Yeah, cool. <laughs> hey, call me back later. Where? Yo, Stick, we hanging out tonight? Yeah. Call me on Stick's phone. For award-winning customer service and all the minutes you need, switch to U.S. Cellular. Yeah, you'll get the minutes you need to use your own phone. U.S. Cellular. We connect with you. Come on, Mr. Culver. Keep them coming. Okay. Pat Bennett. Club salad. No mushrooms. Pat A. Bennett. Hot and spicy chicken salad. No olives. Patricia Bennett. A grilled chicken cashew salad. Perfect as is. Great job, Kevin. I get a lot of practice, Mr. Culver. People love a salad made fresh to order. Rachel Kamen. Garden salad ranch dress. Fair storm. Hot and spicy chicken sandwich. Salad. <laughs> Hot and spicy. <sighs> Adam A. Abbott. Okay. I can do this. Try a Culver's custom creation salad today. NIU fans, when you enter the Village Commons bookstore, you're entering Husky territory. VCB is the official site for NIU athletics, featuring the new NIU logo on a wide range of hats, t-shirts, shorts, sweats, and NIU logo gifts and accessories. Whether you're a student, graduate, or a fan of NIU athletics, the Village Commons bookstore is your Husky headquarters. Visit us in DeKalb or call us toll-free, 800-700-4868, or on the web at www.bcbs.com. The next Beyond the Glory. Jackie Joyner Kersey helped redefine the image of women in sports. She was the greatest female athlete in the world, but her name was dragged into ugly scandals. You got the crazy media out there saying she's on drugs. And her family was struck by tragedy. The loss of Florence was really devastating. The story behind the world's greatest female athlete. Jackie Joyner Kersey, Beyond the Glory, Sunday at midnight on Fox Sports Net. We're back on Inside Husky Sports. Joining me as he does every Thursday afternoon is the head coach of the 12th ranked and undefeated Northern Illinois Huskies, Mr. Joe Novak. And coach, congratulations. Your team won their seventh game in a row with a victory over the Broncos of Western Michigan. With that victory, we improved to 7-0, as I mentioned, but more importantly, 3-0 in the Mid-American Conference. And unlike the previous six victories you've had so far this year, 
Your team got after the Broncos right away. They didn't have to come from behind. In fact, we scored on our very first possession. Yeah, and I kind of like it that way, Brad. No problem with that at all. And I think we made a real concerted effort all week in practice and really trying to come out of the box much quicker than we had in the past. We went to our two-minute mode with our offense. Our defense started it off by doing a great job, and our kickoff team got, got us great field position, and we scored in two plays. So it really was good to come out of the box quickly. Uh, the team seemed like it had a lot of enthusiasm. Of course, we had another record crowd at Husky Stadium, so it was a great way to start it off, and you carried that momentum throughout the game. Yeah, it sure is great to get crowds like that, Brad. I can't tell you how much that means to our football team and the support for our program. And certainly, we always played a little bit better with a crowd like that. Well, it was exciting from the very beginning. Let's take a look at those highlights. There were a lot of them in the first half of play. It's the Huskies and the Broncos from Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. For the second week in a row, Coach, we were blessed with wonderful weather, and there's a look at that record-breaking crowd, 28,211, and that's the third time this year we've set an attendance record here at Husky Stadium. And like I said, that's so great, Brad, to see the crowd up in there and getting excited, and here we start off after a great kickoff team and the penalty there, and then Kirsten on the first play throws them for about a four or five-yard loss, and we get great field position after the punt. And on our second play, we throw a little screen out here to Mike, and uh, he takes it from there. Great block by Pete. PJ, another one down here by uh, Eben Alkin and Galani, and some great blocks on that screen pass, and of course a great run by Mike. Sam Hurd had a great block out there on the edge as well, and we'll see it on the replay. There's uh, uh, Galani getting out on the block. Mike gets the pass, and he even has it gets his face mask grab, but that shows you the great strength and power of Mike Turner, and then he turns on the afterburners for the touchdown. Again, great blocking downfield by our players, and a great team effort, and like I said, Mike finishes it off. Great way to start out the ball game. After a Western Michigan field goal to make it 7-3, the Huskies come back in the next position, and there's Josh Haldy hitting Sam Hurd, and he will turn this into a 56-yard game. Yeah, great uh, individual effort. Great throw by Josh, but then Sam takes it from there, makes a couple guys miss, and then takes off, and uh, again gets us down in close. Unfortunately, we can't get it in the end zone, but we do get a field goal to go up 10-3. With that field goal, Steve Azar set a new Mid-American Conference kick scoring record. He has a total now of 332 career points and that surpasses Todd France from Toledo. Great, great for Steve. He's had a great career here certainly and uh, really pleased for him. And there uh, Quince Holman gets a sack and a quarterback. I think we had seven for the day which was great. We got great pressure on their quarterback. Here's Josh out there hitting Sam Hurd again and Sam again making some things happen after the catch. Great to see Sam making those moves and, and, and making like you said those yards after the catch. That would set up this touchdown pass, a three-yard pass from Josh Haldy to Brad Sieslack, his second touchdown reception of the year. Yeah, I think he's caught three passes, two touchdowns. I like that percentage, Brad. That would increase the score to 17-3. We're still in the first quarter, Coach, and we're still putting the defensive pressure on Bronco quarterback Chad Munson. Great pressure, Vince Reynolds with the sack, and I'll tell you, that guy's playing real good football for us right now. Again, still first quarter action here. Josh Haldy goes across the middle to Keith Perry, and there we see Keith's size and strength as he pushes away the defender to get some extra yardage. Let me tell you, that youngster blocked real good, too. That's the best football game he's played since he's been here. And you kind of like that from a senior. Great great run by Mike. Great move. Boy, he just froze that kid on the line of scrimmage and gets us down in close. Again, this is the only thing a little disconcerting. Twice we're down in there and we go back to the field goal mode. But, uh, you know, you take points when you can get them. But sure would like to get that thing in the end zone. 20 to 3 the score after that. Azar field goal. More pressure on the uh, by the Husky defense. This time it's Brian Atkinson with the quarterback sack. And Brian had a one wonderful game. That was probably his best game. You know, we challenged him to step up after losing Nick Duffy, and Brian has, has done a great job with leadership and, and just a great job. And there's a guy right there, Hawkins. Great play. I tell you, he played real well stepping in for Nick, and certainly feel bad for Nick, and you miss Nick, but those guys made great plays, as did Rob Lee. What a great interception that was by Rob. And great position, and you know, that youngster can run. And a great position, goes up, makes a great play on the interception. I know the uh the passing game of Western Michigan was a great concern to you, but when we put pressure on the quarterback like we did, when we have the secondary doing a great job, and when we have our offense on the field as long as we did, it makes things tough for the opponents. You see Michael here a couple times. And while we got a chance here, Brad, I do want to come in. Great run by Mike. I want to come in both our coaching staffs. I thought they had great game plans. They had our kids well prepared. And then, of course, our players went out and executed it, but our coaches did a great job. With that 18-yard touchdown scamper that we just saw by Michael Turner. It increased the score to 27-3. Here we are right before the half, and talk about great plays in the secondary. Here for the second week in a row, 
Uh, Adrell Hansbro comes up with a key interception. A great play by Adrell. Again, great position, just like he was coached. He had two guys, really, and he was splitting them. He broke on the ball and got his foot down in bounds, made a great, great play. What a great sight that is, Coach, with you leading by a, a couple of touchdowns and more going into the halftime locker room, 27 to 3. You like it, but you know, Brad, I was still real nervous. You know, the way they throw the ball, again, they were second or third in the country in passing. You know, you can score right now, a turnover or something, and you, you got a football game. So in this day and age, even a 24 point lead at halftime isn't enough. Well, it would be, however, for the Huskies because they came out and did the job with a great offensive drive to start out the third quarter. We'll take a look at those highlights, but first, let's take a look at some of the scores from around the Mid-American Conference football action last weekend. is the best teacher. Luckily, the best experience I'm getting in college is the NIU experience. I'm studying with dedicated professors in a program that's nationally ranked, and I'm applying what I learned to real-world business issues. So when I leave NIU with my degree in accountancy, I'll be a top recruit for companies that value real-world know-how. Get a step ahead. Get the NIU experience. show that takes you inside the world of extreme sports each and every weekday. Five, four, three, two, one. For breaking news, event highlights, and inside features you won't find anywhere else. Five, four, three, two, one. Weekdays on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to Inside Husky Sports. Brad Hoy along with the NIU head coach, Joe Novak. And coach, uh, we were a bit apprehensive even though we held the 24-point lead on the Broncos. I was thinking that perhaps there would be a reversal of fortune. We had done so well in the second half in our previous games, I thought perhaps since we got the big lead, there might have been a little letdown. Well, again, they score so quickly the way they throw the football, Brad. I was nervous, as I mentioned before, but it was important that we take that ball in the second half and go right down and move it and take some clock and score, and we did that. We talked about finishing the locker room. Our kids went out and did that. They sure did. Let's take a look at those second half highlights. The Broncos and the Huskies from Husky Stadium. Here's a look at some of the Hall of Fame inductees for 2003. Former women's basketball coach Jane Albright, Sam Bedrosian, a former basketball and baseball player, and the cowboy, LaShawn Johnson. Boy, would you like to have him in a uniform? Great right to see LaShawn. You know, I've gotten to know him a little bit here. Seems really like a real nice person. I know he's a great player. I know Mike Turner was excited to have him in attendance, and, uh, and as was P.J. Fleck. And here's P.J. We should really call this P.J.'s drive because I think he had six catches uh, in the 17th play drive. He really did. You know what? I want to throw in. I don't want to miss Mike Korchuk getting inducted too. That was a great honor for Mike. But PJ takes it in here and scores. And uh, like you said, had six catches in the drive. I think he had 10 for the day. So one of the leading receivers in the country. That drive went 80 yards and took up eight minutes and 16 seconds. What a way to start the second half. And here's another good way. The defense didn't miss a beat. There's Leonard Cooksey with the quarterback sack. Leonard has played well every game. He's really been a real solid force in the middle of our defensive line. And there's a great play by Randy Drew. Great position by their receiver where Randy rips the ball out and a great play. Our secondary played great. They did a wonderful job. That was one of a couple of past uh, deflections that Randy Drew had. The defense still playing tough. How about this hit Kirsten Strothman puts on backup quarterback Jonathan Drock. Great hit by Kirsten. He's really played well stepping in there for Javen Lee. So uh, it's good to see that kind of depth. 
I know there was some worry about uh, our defensive ends with the loss of Jason Frank, but Vincent Reynolds really stepped up. That was his second quarterback sack on the afternoon. He's having a great senior year. He's playing as well as anybody in our conference. Here's Adrian Davis. It's great to get these guys in the game. I'm going to tell you, this guy's a good football player, Brad. It's just too bad we can't get him more opportunities, but I can't wait to in the near future because he can play. That run went for 29 yards. Here's a last desperation pass by the uh, the Broncos, and, and there's uh, safety Ray Smith, and, and that will be the end. Great play by Ray. Great catch. I was glad to see it for him. And, uh, you know, I didn't really expect that kind of score, Brad, to be honest with you. I thought it would be a heck of a game. Coach Darnell does a great job over at Western Michigan and certainly pleased to come out with a win and really plays with the effort of our kids. So it was probably our our best game of the year. I know you don't like to focus on stats, Coach, but a couple really stand out, and they're uh, minus two rushing yards for Western Michigan, 514 total yards for the Huskies, and those quarterback sacks, seven for the Huskies, none for Western Michigan, and the Broncos were leading the league in quarterback sacks coming into the game. I'm glad you mentioned that. Our offensive line, and including Turner and our backs, A.J., did a great job of protecting Josh. I think he only got hit three times on the day, Brad. Well, I know you want to be peaking about this time of the year, especially especially with that big game at Bowling Green looming on the horizon. But uh, you had to be very, very satisfied with the play on both sides of the football. I was. You know, we had some kids step in there, especially on the defensive side, and, and go in there and play awful well. And like I said, it's probably our best game, and it's a great time of the year to be playing your best football. Well, I know the, the uh, players were very, very excited, and we had a chance to catch up with a few of them in the locker room after that big homecoming victory over the Broncos of Western Michigan. As a defense, we can't we came together this week. You know, it's it's one of those gut check things. You're six, seven weeks into the season. Um, a couple of your main key guys go out. This is where you see what kind of football team you have. You know, and um, I, I didn't feel very much pressure because I was confident in my abilities. And um, the, the hard work's done Monday through uh, through Thursday. And when you come out, you know what you're doing. And the playing playing part's the easy part. So I, I think this whole week it was it was a big confidence builder uh, from the coaches and the and the players. The two weeks I was out, you know, I was I was kind of down, you know, because I didn't get to get in. But now I get to get in and an opportunity to start. So I was loving it, you know. I was playing ball. First thing coach said, as soon as we, uh, what Sunday practice, you got to play fast. That's what we did. Get around the edge, try and sack the quarterback. It's the best thing we can do. Something a little bit different was the was the no huddle. Uh, you implemented that, and it really seemed to get you guys going. Yeah, we've been really worried about the slow starts this year, and I, we thought that this would be a way that we could really get things going off the bat because whenever we've been in two minute this year, we've really done a good job moving the ball down the field. And uh, we started off, and it actually worked. You know, we were pretty, pretty excited about that, so we stuck with it pretty much the whole first half. And then the second half, you know, we just wanted to, to run the ball a little more, and so we kind of got out of it. Todd Francis is the man I beat, and he was a great kicker. And, you know, awards and points come with winning, and I'm just fortunate enough to be on a team right now that we're doing both. Bowling Green is going to be a tough game next week. We're going to go in there to their house, and we're going to have to play better than we played today to beat them, and we know it. And we're all, all we're hoping for is to come away with another win. Two for two for the second week in a row. We have two Huskies being acknowledged as players of the week. Steve Azar for the second week in a row as the special teams player of the week in the West Division. And then Brian Atkinson as the West Division defensive player of the week. And, uh, you know, as you said, you challenged that defense, and, and Brian was one of the uh, players that uh, responded to the challenge. He really was. Brian's a good football player. And, again, he's having a wonderful year. But with Duffy out of there, it was important that he stepped up both on the field and with his leadership, and he really took that challenge and did a great job. Well, with that victory, of course, the Huskies improved to 3-0 in the Mid-American Conference. They are tied for the league lead with uh, Bowling Green and, of course, the Rockets of Toledo. And that sets up that marquee matchup this coming weekend. The Huskies traveling to Bowling Green to take on the Falcons. And, Coach, I know both of your programs, both Bowling Green and IU, had this game circled on their calendar probably since last December. Well, I think we both hoped we'd get to this point. But, uh, you know, it's a big game. There's no question about that, Brad. Whoever wins it's going to be sitting right up front in the driver's seat to a degree. Let's not forget Toledo. I think we did the same conversation last year at this time, and it is a big game, but there's a lot of football to be played. Toledo's in there with both of us yet, so it's going to be an exciting finish to the season. Bowling Green, as we mentioned, they're undefeated Mid-American Conference play. They only have one loss, 
and that's to Ohio State, and that was just by a touchdown, and they have a very big win, a BCS win over Purdue, who's ranked, I believe, in the top 10 this week. Bowling Green ranked number 23 in the country, and it's a very similar scenario as it was last year. Bowling Green came into Husky Stadium in early November. They were undefeated. The Huskies knocked them off. I know Bowling Green wants to return the favor. Well, I'm sure they do, and uh, like I said, they're a very good football team. Like I said, two uh, uh, great games there. They beat Purdue and lost to Ohio State, both of them ranked in the top 10 or 11 in the country. And uh, like I said, Josh Harris, probably one of the best football players in the country, really is a great player. So it's going to be a heck of a football game on Saturday. Of course, the Huskies and the Falcons will be on a national stage with the game being televised on ESPN2. Kickoff is at 3.05 p.m. Central Time. If you can't make it to the game or if you can't catch it on TV, you can certainly listen to the game on the Husky Sports Network. Bill Baker, Sid Simmons, and Mark Lindo with the play-by-play. Coach, good luck against the Falcons of uh, Bowling Green, and of course, we'll see the highlights here next week on Inside Husky Sports on Thursday at 3.30. Great. Thanks, Brad. Okay. Head coach Joe Novak of the undefeated and 12th ranked Northern Illinois University Huskies. Coming up next on Inside Husky Sports, we'll take a look at NIU women's golf. This and more when Inside Husky Sports returns. Come on, Mr. Culver, keep them coming. Okay. Pat Bennett. Club salad, no mushrooms. Pat E. Bennett. Hot and spicy chicken salad, no olives. Patricia Bennett. A grilled chicken cashew salad, perfect as is. Great job, Kevin. I get a lot of practice, Mr. Culver. People love a salad made fresh to order. Rachel Kamen. Got to sell ranch dress. Sear Storm. Hot and spicy chicken sandwich. Salad. <laughs> Hot and spicy. <sighs> Adam A. Abbott. Okay, I can do this. Try a Culver's custom creation salad today. Yeah, hey, call me on Ed's phone. Is your phone broken, Joe? No, my wireless company doesn't give me enough anytime minutes. Hey, yeah, cool. <laughs> hey, call me back later. Where? Yo, Stick, we hanging out tonight? Yeah. Call me on Stick's phone. For award-winning customer service and all the minutes you need, switch to U.S. Cellular. Yeah, you'll get the minutes you need to use your own phone. U.S. Cellular, we connect with you. The search for new knowledge doesn't have a beginning or an end. At NIU, discovery is a seamless web of teaching, research, and outreach. So it's no surprise that some of our best teachers are also world-famous scholars. I think there's a strong relationship between good teaching and active research. Dream, discover, and do. The NIU Experience. back at Inside Husky Sports. It's been a very good last couple of weeks to play some golf, and it's been a very good fall for the NIU women's golf team. The Husky golfers have posted some very good scores in a couple of tournaments this fall. Coach Pam Tiska's team is very young, just like the NIU men's golf team, but they have the talent and the promise for a very bright future. The Northern Illinois University women's golf team came into the season with a more experienced team than last year but even their veterans are still young. We had seven freshmen last year, a sophomore, and I think, and then two seniors. And one senior ended up getting hurt, so we ended up traveling almost with four freshmen and a senior and a sophomore. And, and that's young, so we knew that. We knew this year we're coming in, we'd have, all would have experience. Even our seasoned veterans are young players, but uh, we've had a much better year this year. They were really in the hot spotlight last year, and. Uh, and learned a lot and um, you know benefited from the, the, the training that they got from those experiences and it's just much easier this year. Now that the younger players are more experienced, the team is seeing steady improvement. Well, we start off by having six or seven freshmen on the team and only a couple upperclassmen and then one of our class, upperclassmen hurt herself so we were kind of young. And now that we're older, we've been improving a lot. So it's been helping us as a team and individually. We really seem to be getting some depth that we haven't had in the last couple of years. Uh, we have really six or seven players that can uh, come in, in and out of the lineup. And I think of the three tournaments that we've played, uh, each tournament has come back with a different top dog for us. Although the fall season is coming quickly to an end, the women's golf team is by no means done practicing for the year. They'll move indoors and work on improving their swing and keep conditioning in hopes that the preparation will pay off next spring. 
We have our fall season, which is just straight, like every weekend, and then we have off season, which allows us to work out and condition, and then we'll, we're ready for the spring again. And we hit into nets, and we're, we prepare all year round. We use the two seasons, fall and the spring, to kind of glue together a complete season. But we do get, uh, you know, a, a good amount of competition in uh, regionally uh, when the weather is good, and then there is time that we need to seek the sun in the early spring. We have all winter long to work on our games and um, get better, and then we go to Florida when it's nice and warm. We don't have to worry about the bad weather here. It's been a fun year so far, and I have a feeling that the entire season, uh, once we're recapping in May, it's going to be one of those I'm going to be sorry to end. Until then, the team will be working hard for the spring season ahead. For Inside Husky Sports, I'm Christy Wooden. Thanks, Christy. Fortunately, the NIU women's golf team won't have to spend the entire winter indoors. In January, the team will head down to the southern part of the United States for a couple of tournaments, and then they'll return home in March and April and get in as many rounds as they can before the conference tournament takes place later in the spring. There's still more Inside Husky Sports to come, so stay tuned. I'm conducting cancer research. I'm designing a Formula One car. I'm on an archaeological dig in Sicily. I'm preparing for a classical singing career. At NIU, students don't just learn to do, they do to learn. Through internships, cooperative education, research projects, and outreach programs, NIU puts students a step ahead with real-world learning. Dream, discover, and do. The NIU Experience. Applebee's Take Two is back. One can have a dream, baby. Two can make that dream so real. It takes two, baby. It takes two, baby. Make a dream come true. Applebee's Take Two. Just take two. Choose two of your favorite entrees for one mouth-watering plate. NIU fans, when you enter the Village Commons bookstore, you're entering Husky territory. VCB is the official site for NIU athletics, featuring the new NIU logo on a wide range of hats, t-shirts, shorts, sweats, and NIU logo gifts and accessories. Whether you're a student, graduate, or a fan of NIU athletics, the Village Commons bookstore is your Husky headquarters. Visit us in DeKalb or call us toll free, 800-700-4868 or on the web at www.vcbs.com. We're back on Inside Husky Sports. It's time now to introduce our Scholar Athlete of the Week, and it's someone who you met just a few moments ago. She's Irish Whalen, a member of the NIU women's golf team. Irish is a senior from Hanover, Illinois, and she currently holds a 3.29 grade point average in history. Because of her outstanding work in the classroom, Irish is recognized as the Husky Scholar in Northern's Academic Excellence Program. So congratulations to Irish Whalen, our Husky Scholar Athlete of the Week. Unfortunately, we're all out of time for this week's edition of Inside Husky Sports, but we'll be back next Thursday at 3.30 p.m. We'll bring you more NIU football highlights, this time from the game at Bowling Green State University. We'll also tell you about plans for the new Alumni and Visitor Center on the NIU campus. For all of us here at Inside Husky Sports, I'm Brad Hoy. Thanking you for joining us, and we'll see you again next Thursday right here on Inside Husky Sports. Mats and Mitsubishi. For more than 15 years, we've been one. In fact, no one in the Midwest has more or has sold more new Mitsubishis for less than Max Madsen. Let us prove it. Wake up and drive now to Max Madsen Mitsubishi, 2424 West Ogden Avenue in Downers Grove, just a half a mile east of 355. Now, get 0% financing plus a seven-year, 100,000-mile limited powertrain warranty.
features. 